Hello friends, welcome to part four of the uh, anti-gravity double coil experiment. So here's the latest uh, progress. Uh, this monstrosity is a high voltage capacitor. I've now included four um, circular pieces of sheet metal. It's 22 gauge. Uh, this stuff is not galvanized. It's, it's uh, for welding, I believe. So we have four of them. They're separated by foam and also plexiglass pieces. The uh, the bottom plate is connected to the third plate and the top plate is connected to the second plate. So it's just a big high voltage um, capacitor. And yeah, I apologize for the, uh, the amateurs um, look to it or the ugly appearance, whatever you wanna say about it. I'm just, I just built it for practicality purposes not to make it look uh, attractive or anything. <laughs> so yeah, it's not uh, soldered together, it's just clipped, like alligator clips and other clips. Um, I just clipped it together. I realized that it would be a more um, efficient connection if I soldered them, but I've just been playing with different setups really quickly, so I wanted the most uh, user-friendly um, set up so I didn't solder anything for now and yeah I got rid of the magnet and the electrodes what I did is I with a small uh, Dremel grinder I ground the tips so that they're they're like pointed now pointed tips they work better when they're pointed and I've got them at about just under two and a half inches so I can pull a two, almost a two and a half inch arc now, which is uh, a lot better than in the last video where it was only one inch and five eighths. So I'm gonna turn it on here and you will see the coil move. Um, now the plates are metal and they are uh, magnetic so the coil might be reacting to them a little bit. There's also um, a printer, an old printer, but underneath the coil, which is mostly plastic, but there are metal parts, so it might be reacting to that metal a little bit. And then of course there's like the Earth's magnetic field, but it, that's uh, extremely weak. So I wouldn't really um, take that into consideration as too much of a factor in uh, possibly influencing the coil's movement. I know somebody said that that's something to think about, but I would not, um, it's just too nominal. The Earth's magnetic field is too weak to really be influencing um, to any significant degree this coil. So anyways, yeah, I'll turn it on and I'll let you decide whether this is anti-gravity levitation or is it just like reacting to magnetic objects nearby you decide so here we go i'm just going to turn it on Okay, so I'm going to turn it off. Okay, I'm turning it off. And as you can see, the coil is bouncing around. So it's obviously uh, has sufficient power now to do, uh, to move around at least, but I really don't know if that's like anti-gravity or is that is it just reacting to the magnetic uh, metal nearby? Uh, I don't know. It was working a little bit better. If you notice, there's a bunch of misfires where 
instead of forming an arc, it's like, it sounds like uh, the electricity is just going through the air elsewhere, but not really forming an arc. I think I, I need better insulation and maybe the discs, the, the discs could be further apart. This plexi plexiglass is only, uh, I think, one eighth or three thirty-two. Uh, so if it was bigger, like maybe if the the plexiglass was like quarter inch or or I had multiple layers of it, I think that would be a better um, insulator. And then I could pull a bigger arc, which uh, would cause um, a greater surge of electron flow through the coil causing it to um, move more. So yeah, there's different uh, possibilities. Um, I think for my next exp my next video, I'm gonna make sure the coil is far enough away from anything magnetic to rule that out as a possible um, influencing factor. And um, yeah, I... Uh, I wish I had a magnet nearby that I could grab. I'm not quite sure if this uh, sheet metal is magnet magnetic, although I'm pretty sure, 99% sure it is. But uh, yeah, there's a couple of different options. Right now, I have the two coils in series with each other, but a different option would be to put them in parallel. So maybe that would be more effective in creating an anti-gravity effect. And, uh, yeah, other than that, I'm not sure what else to do. Maybe use gold electrodes instead of tungsten rods uh, and uh, maybe more metal discs, you know, stack it up even higher, have more insulation. Um, and also, yeah, make the coil like bigger, like have um, as I've said before, the secondary coil, the little, the little one here, you know, make it bigger or add a couple more around the, uh, the ring, the larger, uh, ring coil and see what that does. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you all, uh, all again next time. Bye for now. Do you think I don't know you, Alexander? I can look inside your memories, your nightmares, your dreams. You're a man haunted by those two most terrible words. What if? Okay, I just wanted to show it one more time because uh, it was sort of misfiring a lot the first time, so this time I moved the, the uh, electrodes to about two and one eighth, two inches and one eighth of an inch apart, and now uh, they form a um, a regular. They fi it fires uh, regularly. So let me turn it on, and you can see. Oh yeah, it got louder too. <laughs> so yeah, the coil moves as you can see. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool, I think. So that's it.